Welcome back everyone to Nama's Bronze to Diamond in 4 months series. Instead of a singular lesson this week, Nama is getting the Challenger earpiece treatment with Hector in his ears as he plays a couple of games. We wanted to see firsthand what he's thinking in game to see what kind of struggles you and him may be facing when applying the previous lessons. We'll also get to discuss some very common issues that a lot of low elo players may have without even realizing it. Before getting into it, we just want to reiterate that there is absolutely zero coaching going on behind the scenes. Any videos we recommend or any lesson given to him will be linked directly in the course on the site. You can follow along and learn exactly what he's learning each week. As always, let's check in on his progress. With this latest lesson, he actually managed to complete his gold promos easily going undefeated. He even hard carried both of his Orianna games as she's by far his most comfortable champion now. We did tell him to incorporate Lucian into his champion pool, but he was a bit anxious about losing his promos again, so he hasn't played him too much yet. This does bring up the issue of ranked anxiety though. If he continues being scared to practice him in fear of losing LP, then we will definitely be talking about how to deal with the fear of losing and ranked anxiety in the future. Alright, let's get into the guide. Hector coached Nama through two Orianna games. The first, unfortunately, was hard carried by Nama's jungler, so he barely had any game impact, but ended the game with an 8.9 CS average, the highest Nama has ever gotten. The second game, Nama definitely had much more impact. He managed to neutralize Zed in lane, never died, and ended the game with 25 Magi stacks, playing a huge role in his team's victory. Both of these full games will be on the site for those who wish to view them in their entirety. For this guide though, we'll be covering the bigger issues that we noticed preventing Nama from destroying his opponents. Let's start with the positives though. After last week's trading guide, Nama has become much more proficient at punishing his opponents. His skill shot accuracy in lane has gone through the roof now that he's throwing spells right when his opponent is last hitting. Not only that, but in ranged versus melee matchups, he's appropriately setting up slow pushes to punish the vulnerable melee early on. In fact, if you did your assigned homework, you may notice that the situation Nama has Zed in is almost completely identical to how McBaze was punishing the Fizz he was up against in the guide that we told Nama to watch. At the rate Nama is improving, McBaze may need to start worrying about his job being snatched up. Unfortunately, while Nama has a lot of the right ideas and usually builds advantages, he's never really able to capitalize on it and extend his lead as much as he potentially could. Here's one of the first things he's still lacking on. Nama manages to use his early lead to completely chunk Zed out of the lane. Then Hector asks, Okay, so what should you do here? I should push. No, 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 no. Freeze, 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 freeze. You can actually just recall here. League is a game about quick choices, and with so many variables present, it's hard to make the right decision immediately without a ton of practice, so we're not faulting Nama too hard here. That's why the fundamentals are so important. There are two questions Nama should have asked himself based on his prior lessons. Number one, is Zed recalling at a bad time? In this case, yes. One of the first rules that we learned about recalling is that you should almost always push the wave into the enemy tower before you do. That way, the wave bounces back to your side of the lane and you come back to a chunky wave to farm. Number two, the best punish for a bad recall timing is setting up a freeze. So, Nama should ask himself, is this wave freezable at the moment? And the answer would be yes. Due to the even minion rule, since the wave is closer to Zed's side and is about even, his reinforcing wave will get there first and it should freeze towards Nama. It does take a bit of practice to see these types of decisions instantly, but when mastered, well, you can see the results for yourself. Nama's early harass was converted into a huge minion advantage with all these creeps that he's about to pick up. He did end up tanking a full combo, but if anything, Zed was wrong for doing so. Thanks to the freeze, the wave was so close to Nama's side that Kha'Zix just ends up killing him for wasting his shadow like that. Not knowing what to immediately do with the wave wasn't the biggest problem that we noticed though. In general, Nama and most low elo players aren't actually aware of just how many chances they have to kill their opponent constantly. Here we see Zed attempt to go for a kill, but he's not able to finish Nama off due to the Seeker's arm guard that he picked up. This prompts Hector to tell Nama that he now has a chance to punish him. Technically this guy is killable if he uses a shadow. Once it wears off, don't be afraid to ult him. Let's take a look at just how many kills Nama misses, even though Hector told him exactly what he should look to do. He might walk up for the... 
Oh, he was dead. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fine. Like, these champions with, like, abilities like that, you may want to just look it up before the game starts. So you have a general idea of how long you have to punish. Yeah. Like, right now, 15 seconds. There, you could have ulted again. Okay. There, you could have ulted again. That was three missed kills in under a minute, which is definitely not ideal. Recognizing when certain champions are vulnerable without their key abilities is huge. Zed without both his ultimate and shadow is a literal melee minion, and Nama could have easily run him down with his phase rush. The issue was also present during the Cinder game. Nama got her quite low during the laning phase, but never really managed to finish her off. Even when Syndra completely whiffed her stun, Nama would be scared and walk away. Recognizing your opponent's important abilities being down and knowing that you can literally just walk at them isn't a hard skill to learn. You just need to be aware of what they are and their cooldowns. We highly suggest having the League Wiki open when loading into a game, especially if you're new and not familiar with all the champions. For example, you might be surprised to hear that at level 3, Viz's E has a whopping 16 second cooldown. That champion may be extremely annoying, but if he ever wastes his E, he is very exploitable during the early levels. Of course, there may be a reason for Nama's hesitation. A common issue you may have with him is that you may be dying every time you play aggressively, causing you to hesitate on kill opportunities. The other huge issue Nama had was with his warding. Nama knows just one ward. <laughs> he always places his ward in the brush right beside the lane. This is fair, considering we haven't mentioned warding whatsoever yet. Which brings us to your homework assignment, if you feel like you're being ganked a lot whenever you try to go aggro in lane. We've made up a quick guide on how to never get ganked with proper warding. The biggest tip we gave was actually autopilot wards, which Nama and you can benefit greatly from. Autopilot wards are excellent, especially when you're just starting to learn how to ward. However, these brush wards that Nama is placing see ganks coming super late, as the vision they give is rather limited. Compare that to our autopilot ward for mid, and not only will you see the enemy jungler earlier, but you can see so many other ways that they're approaching you. If you combine autopilot wards and this following tip, you're going to be untouchable. As long as you stand on that side of the ward, you'll be fine. Because if he comes from the left, you'll see him and can react. And if he comes from the right, you have a lot more space to work with. So you always stand on the side of the lane where you warded. Yeah. Look how easily Nama is able to evade this Ramus gank with that tip. Now imagine if Nama had used an autopilot ward on top of that. He would have had three more seconds to react to that gank. Tracking the enemy jungler's pathing can be extremely difficult, and sometimes it can be unrewarding because low elo junglers just path randomly anyway. Combine these two tips though, and you won't need to ever think about how the enemy jungler is pathing since you'll be almost impervious to ganks. If you want more tips though for any lane, then check out that warding guide on the site. We cover how to deal with the most annoying type of junglers like stealth champions or gankers with global ultimates, so that you can never get ganked again. That's going to wrap up the biggest issue that we saw in this challenger earpiece. Of course, they talk about a lot of other small things, so if you're interested, you can just go watch the full commentaries. Before our weekly quiz though, Hector did give Nama a new rule during this session. If you remember the last rule, it's that Nama must stop trading if he's ever below 60% HP, since getting a kill is usually not worth the risk of dying. Rule number two is that Nama must buy Magi's Soul Stealer every single game, regardless of how he's doing on Ari and Orianna. One reason is just that it's generally correct to build Magi's most of the time in low elo. People kind of just die very easily and very often, so getting 25 stacks is relatively easy if you're playing remotely well. But the main reason Hector is recommending it is because he thinks it will expedite Nama's learning. Negative emotions are easier to recall than positive ones. Do you remember the last time no one flamed in your chat and your team just breezed through the game with proper teamwork? Yeah, as if that's something that could ever happen. But do you remember the last time someone trolled Champion Select and your report did nothing? Yeah, it's easy to remember that kind of stuff for weeks or even months. That's kind of the idea behind this rule. You should be learning from all of your deaths, but if you have Magi's, you can potentially lose up to 50 AP every time you die. Hector's logic is that Nama will pay way more attention to his deaths and recall mistakes way more if each death feels worse than it usually would. Of course, like the previous rule, don't feel like you have to follow it. That's just his opinion and only Nama has to listen. 
All right, let's finish things off with our weekly quiz. Question number one, if you're playing Zillion versus Zoe, should you be fast pushing waves very often? The answer is no. Fast pushing would make the lane very uninteractive and potentially allow Zoe to roam around and kill your teammates. Slow push that wave and keep her in lane, potentially setting up ganks with your powerful slows and stun. Question number two is a bit more tricky. You're playing Victor against Ari and you're both level two. Ari whiffs a charm on you and her Q along with it, but has a huge wave behind her. Do you move up to trade to punish her ability cooldowns? The answer, once again, is no. In the early game, minions are a huge source of damage. Even without their abilities, she would out-trade you if you tried to fight in her wave. But let's say the exact same situation occurred at level 10, then you would look to trade. Your AoE abilities would clear out the wave as you trade, and you could potentially force her out of lane. Anyway, that's going to be it for today. As always, we hope you all enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.